Well, there. People of God, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all here to worship at the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, in South Portland, Maine. I am the Reverend Stephen Savage, the associate pastor here at First Congregational Church. I use he, him pronouns. Our senior minister, Reverend Allison Patton, is away on, um, you know, a well-deserved rest until Tuesday. So have no fear, she will return. But she isn't here today. So let's get up to some trouble. We are joined today by our co-music directors, Terry Foster on piano and on organ, and Deirdre McClure, our choral director here as well, and also, of course, by our incredible Meeting House Choir who is here to bless us with the gift of their voices today. If you're worshiping from home, you might want to say thanks to Alex Rada, who is, who is running our stream today. So if you're here today, maybe turn and give Alex a wave, and maybe wave to the folks at home too, right through that camera. Alex is keeping us, keeping us, well, current with modern technology today. So thank you. If you're new or visiting today, or maybe you just don't come often, or you're feeling disconnected, or you just really like writing on stuff, there are cards in the pews in front of you. Visitor cards. They've got some brightly colored pictures and some blank spaces for you to fill in the ways that we might get in touch or uh, reach out and give you, the way, give you the information you're looking for, ways to be a part of this community. This is the first Sunday of our worship series, Drawn In, Living Out the Creative Life with God, a series of services in which we will take the time to celebrate the creativity and imagination that sits at the center of our very beings as human beings and as followers of Jesus Christ. The story of God and humanity began with an act of creation and continues every day as we act to create God's just and abundant reality today. Friends, as we enter into this space and time together, I invite you to take a deep and spirit-filled breath. No matter what you bring with you this morning or where you are coming from today, no matter why you have sought this space out or where you're headed next, you're welcome here. So join your voices with mine now to profess that welcome using the words in your bulletin or those that appear on your screen. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Now I invite you to join me in this morning's gathering prayer. Creating God, you called forth all that exists in a moment of divine brilliance. Open us again to that spark which you ignited in each of us at our creation and which lit up the dawn on Easter morning. Prepare us to generate more life-giving energy in this world. 
draw us into your story of hope. Give us the courage to dream. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Spirit of the Living God, number 281, and I believe that Deirdre has some special instructions for us. Hi, everybody. By the way, the, um, the song that the choir just sang, we will be singing that during the next six weeks. So this was a practice, and next week we all get to sing it. Uh, this hymn is rather short, and I thought we should all sing it through, and then the choir is going to do it again in harmony, and then we'll all sing it again. As I think I noted just a little bit ago, we are beginning a series that's touching on the concept of creativity and giving of what we have, giving of our gifts, making, doing, and being, specifically what we are imbued with the gifts to create. But it's easy to get caught in the flow of life doing as others do, unable to break free from what has been or what we are told must come next. We are created in the image of a creative, innovative God that calls us to live and act as the unique gifts that we all are. It is only right that we turn to that God when we fall short of our potential. 
And so I invite you now to join with me in this morning's prayer for forgiveness. God of dreamers, we confess that we struggle to imagine the true potential of your love. We fail to witness the possibility in your grace and to hear the hope in you. We are mired and walled in by the trials and experiences of every day. Yet, long to see what future you might sculpt. Gather us in, draw us together, and mold us into a vessel for your love. Forgive our short-sightedness and our lack of imagination. Through our hands, our backs, our voices, and our hearts, help us to craft in faith what only you can see. Amen. Take a moment of silent prayer to speak your own words of your own requests for, for forgiveness to God. Friends, the good news is that you are loved unconditionally by God. When you fall short or miss the mark, God does not turn away. God does not cast you off or send you out. But reliably, God offers a hand up and points us in the right direction. Remembering this and trusting in it, I invite you to turn to one another and pass the peace of Christ with a wave, a handshake, an emoji. Don't forget to share it with the folks at home through the camera right up there. May the peace of Christ be with you.
with any luck, my microphone's on now and not when I was just belting out that tune. <laughs> for all of your sake and for the sake of all of you at home. Do we have any young folk with us today? I mean, we've got a lot of young at heart folk with us today, which is just as good. Are there one or two of you who'd like to come forward and be young on the outside with me for just a few more minutes? Well, wonderful. Come on forward. These folks are young on the outside. Wonderful. Well, we, <laughs> we are gathered this excellent, excellent. There aren't two, I was going to say, we can't do this without you, Karen. We are gathered today as the first Sunday in a series where we're really exploring creativity together. And creativity isn't just something we do in art class, although it, that is something we do in art class. It's not just something we do in coloring books and you, when we're at home. It's a part of our worship as well. And so I, was, I came in prepared to invite young folks to come forward to help me set up our worship table today. I've got an assortment of goodies on it, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I've got young folks to help me put together this worship table. So let's, let's have at it. I can, I can only imagine this is going to be just, just incredibly well done. It's so far, I'm seeing near perfection. How do you all imagine creativity becomes a part of our, of our worship services, of our spirit life, of our faith life? How do you all bring creativity into that? Do you all bring creativity into that? I bet you do. Does anyone have any? Yes. Wonderful. Short stories, poetic essays, writing and painting. These are amazing ways to share who we are and what's inside our faith journey, our life experience. What other creative outlets do you all share? Music. Or music. And thank goodness. Thank God. What's that? Yeah, being in a group, being creative together, gardening, absolutely. That's you know, bringing a little bit of what we have to offer to something God does uh, so well. We're working together as a team. Laughter, yes. If you don't like bad jokes, then I don't know if I'm fully reaching you. Oh, oh. oh good, good. You wish I'd stop, D? Okay, fair enough. Oh, good, good, good. This is beautiful. It is, it, it is wonderful. And I hope that you all will take a moment to come up and see how beauty can be made with just a few simple items and some intentionality. We bring that beauty to the spaces we fill. We bring our gifts to the things that we do, and that includes our faith life. So thank you all so much for helping us to, to build this table. It will brighten our worship time together and make things all the more, more significant for its, for its place. And I don't think any of you have, I don't think any of you are going to be going to Sunday school, just saying. Good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that as these words are read and proclaimed, we may hear what you have to say to us today. Amen. There is a vitality, an energy. There is a vitality, a life force, 
an energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, the world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how valuable, nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. Whether you choose to take an art class, to keep a journal, record your dreams, dance your story, or live each day from your own creative source, Above all else, keep the channel open. Our reading today is from Luke chapter 4, verses 13 through 21. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus, in the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding region. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So much of what this morning's passage described or describes would have been fairly common for those gathered in the synagogue that day. For Jesus to rise, receive the scroll containing the words of the prophet Isaiah, for him to select the passage and to read it aloud, all of that would have been expected. Or at least Accepted. Now the content of what he read is apparently not a single portion of Isaiah's text. More of a combining of different parts, which would have been unusual. But setting that aside, you may not have caught the subtle but monumental nature of a claim that he made when he used the words, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. When he said this, he shifted the prophetic voice of Isaiah from expectant to exclamation. Jesus claims the role that God had described for him through a dove on the day that he was baptized. And what he says he is there to do, well, it's hard, it's a hard thing for those around him to hear. Some believe that the words Isaiah used and that Christ quoted referred to a practice known as Jubilee, a Jewish practice of resettling things. When lost property and wealth is returned to those that lost it. 
and slaves are set free. Historically, as I understand it, this practice began as a cycle lived out every seven years by the Israelites. As time passed, eventually it occurred every 50 or so years. And then according to a number of scholars that I read, it was not practiced again after the end of the Babylonian exile. This would have been several hundred years then since this practice of reset, which ensured a sort of justice amongst the Jewish community, had been practiced. Over several hundred years, it's possible for something very concrete to become a myth. A relic of long past days can become a legend or a dream. And wouldn't it have been a dream for all those who hungered and were in need at this time when Jesus spoke these words? And wouldn't it may, wouldn't it perhaps not great grammar, but the concept is sound. Wouldn't it have been a nightmare for those who had been profiting at the expense of others? Let's not forget the claim Christ makes when he says today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Whether it is a dream come true or a nightmare manifest. The fact is that with that one sentence, the world becomes one of previously unimaginable possibility. No longer is the rigid future where the poor and the oppressed remain laid low at the feet of those who wield wealth and influence the only path forward. No longer is the comfort that those who wield that power know a guarantee or a future on which to bet. Through this simple rabbi, at this small town synagogue, the future sparkles with possibility. What this simple rabbi goes on to do, what we know that Jesus goes on to do, is again a sort of dream, or something out of one anyway, where a single person can and does, like a single drop of water, make a ripple in the sea. And that ripple grows and grows until it crashes on far distant shores, sending the salty spray of change out into the air. And how does he do this? How does, how does he make these, these changes? How does he have this effect? He does it with his hands. He does it with his voice. He does it with the very ideas and images that come into his mind. He brings it to the people who need it, carried on his very feet. And he moves from village to village, on and on until he arrives at the very doorstep of empire. He gives what he has to give, not measuring it against the task he faces, not only when he perceives it to be enough to make a change, but constantly, uniquely, there is no one like Jesus. 
does these things only as he could. He heard that claim that God made through the dove as he emerged from the Jordan River, and he fought with it. He wrestled through the wilderness with it. And then he came out to share it with all of us. He believed, and from that knew, as only the faithful can know, that his gifts, exactly as they were, were exactly what he must bring. And surely you who have been walking this journey recently, those of you who have been walking this journey through the weeks of Lent, Holy Week, through the miracle of Easter, surely you must remember how he charged his friends, his disciples, and through them, all of us. To have faith in the same. To love the world as he did, with exactly what we have to give. Now this week we put our emphasis, we begin a worship series that puts emphasis on creativity and thank goodness for that because way too often messages that begin up here, right here or right there, or sometimes right there, messages that begin up here as give what you have to give, bring your special gifts to the world, are heard by everyone else as do more of what I'm doing, just like this. Do more of what you've always done while you've been sitting there, just like that. Now I've got to tell you, I talk a lot. I play with words and I collect stories, spoken stories, written stories. And so I am here in this place doing this. I would love to paint, or to sketch, or to sew, or to knit or crochet, as so many of you do. I would love to see patterns and possibilities in numbers, and in finances, and in lines of code, as so many of you do. I would love to be as comfortable and confident in my body as so many of you are. I would love to make beautiful music as so many of you have shared today. Or to have the accumulated wisdom of this room, I would love to do all of those things to be and to have all of those things, but I am not, and I do not. So thank God you are, and thank God you do. The ministry of life, one that we all pursue, each and every one of us, no matter where we're standing, we're sitting today, the ministry of life is a creative existence turned outward by love to be experienced by the world. It is impossible to do and be exactly what another is or has done. It is impossible to see or hear exactly as your closest neighbor because we are all so very unique. The life that Jesus lived was a miraculous one. Bear with me here. But I wonder if it wouldn't have been a wasted one in our context in this moment. Dead. He was a man of his place and his time, and so his voice and experience, his wisdom, spoke to the world he knew and walked through every day of his life, but the Christ in him, the Christ
Christ that was him and is him is embodied now as it must be in order to be a relevant voice. It is embodied by the countless unique lives necessary to address a world like ours authentically, uniquely, and creatively. Maybe with love and faith in abundance, our prophetic word made exclamation could be today God's dream of love has been fulfilled in our living. Imagine what might be possible if we all gave what we have, not what we think we ought to offer, but what we have. If that day were to come, when all of us could confidently be who we are and give what we have. I believe that the dream of God so impossible to imagine, so difficult to envision, so hard to explain, would come to be a reality, a commonplace, easy to picture reality all creation. May it be so. Amen.
Friends, if you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes or simply soften your gaze for just a moment so that we can do some visualizing together. Breathe in slowly. And let your breath back out slowly. Again, breathe in. And breathe out. Try to imagine your stresses your anxieties, your deadlines are rolling off your head. They're rolling down your shoulders, down your arms, and onto the floor. See a blue sky above you. An incredible sunny blue sky day. When you think of that sky, when you think of the term, the sky's the limit, what do you imagine? What would you do if you could dream up anything for this town? For this community? For this world? Friends, I invite you to take hold of a thought one of, those, one of those things that you might hold up. It can be just a word, a simple idea. Hold it in your mind. That concept expressing a desire or a dream that you would help create if you could. Hold that in your hearts. Let us pray. Let us pray for Betsy Kiter and family as they mourn the loss of her brother, Perry. And for Elaine and family, dear friends of Judith Borelli, as they mourn the passing of Elaine's mother last night. God, we are dreamers. We're hopers. We're believers. We're expectors. We are imaginers. We are your people. We long to walk the path you have laid out before us. To be attentive to the needs of our neighbors. To be attentive to the needs of the hungry and the sick 
of the lonely and the afraid. We long to be your people, to stand up to the unimaginable need of the world. And yet we cannot do it alone. Remind us that we walk this path not just by ourselves, not just with one another, but with you, O Lord. You hear our dreams of of justice. You hear our dreams of peace and love, and you wish them to be true. You empower us to make them reality. Give us an awareness, a confidence, a surety that you are with us when we doubt, when we feel too small, too insignificant, that we might stand up to unimaginable odds, confident, capable, because we are imbued with you, your love, your grace, your mercy, your patience, your peace. We are but vessels created, molded, filled, and put to use by you, O Lord. What greater purpose could we have? And so for your presence in our lives, for your work, as we are set to do it. And for the gift of all creation, we pray our prayer of supplication, of adoration, and of thanksgiving, O Lord. And we pray using words like those that Christ taught. Our Mother, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Woo! (laughs) Friends, we are a gifted people. Each of us gifted in our own special ways. Each of us given skills, resources, interests, passions, wisdom, experience. And the magical thing about all those things, the wonderful thing about all those things, is those are all, each and every one of them, exactly what this church needs to function. What a coincidence. Each and every one of you has something to offer the work of this church. 
whether it is an idea or your time, your energy, your passion. Again, I could go through the list of all the different ways that we are each individually blessed, but whatever it is, including your money. Given to this church, it will be put to God's work, to good use. If you would like to give financially to the church, we would be very appreciative. And you can give in a number of ways. Whether you leave your contribution in the box at the back of the sanctuary, if you're here in person, or you give online by going to the website and clicking on the donate link in the top right-hand corner of the website, or you use the QR code that's in your beacon and should be on your screen, but if it's not, uh, in, in your weekly word as well, I believe, if it's not, then I encourage you to find it in your bulletin and or to let me know and I'll make sure it gets there. No matter how you want to give, no matter how you feel called to give, your generosity makes what we're doing here possible and for that we are so incredibly grateful. Take a moment, a moment of prayerful consideration as you can contemplate the ways that you might be generous today. Beloved God, may all the gifts given in all the ways that they are shared be taken in and turned back out into the world as your will would have it done. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 520 in the hymnals, Restless Weaver.
There are a number of announcements in the bulletin this morning, and I am going to hit the highlights. Um, you are invited to join us next Sunday, April 21st, for a celebration of Earth Day as we honor God's creativity and hover over the ways that we are called to live in kinship with creation. After worship, join the Mission Social Witness Team for lunch with Dr. Kara Lavender-Law to learn how plastics interrupt the ocean. You may RSVP for the lunch so we know how many to expect. Through the month of April, look for collection boxes in the curved hallway, which is out this way, to reduce items in the waste stream. There's a whole list in the program here. You can bring in worn sneakers, oral hygiene products, eight egg cartons, plastic film, and yarn, and there are different organizations that are recycling all of those items, so that's pretty cool. Um, Sunday, May 19th, from 2 to 5 p.m., Cape Elizabeth United Church of Christ wants to participate, if you want to participate in environmental in action initiatives here at FCC, they're inviting you. The BTS Center has invited congregational green teams, earth care committees, and individuals that are interested in environmental and or climate action to gather for workshops, networking, and a vision for creating holistic green teams. So if you're interested, you can contact our Reverend Allison Patton, 1L, 2Ps at F, I'm sorry, 2Ts at FCCUCC.org. And that address for her is also in the bulletin. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of the Pastor Parish Relations Committee, I invite you all to recognize and celebrate Pastor Steve's third anniversary of his ordination, which that took place on April 11th, 2021, at the Standish, Standish Congregational Church. And I remember the day well because it was on Zoom. It was on Zoom. It was sort of on Zoom. Sort of on Zoom, that's right. We thank you for being our stronghold through the past three years, Steve. And I think if everybody would like to get up and sing with us, we're going to sing Happy Anniversary. You know the tune. <laughs> I am spoiled, and I'm okay with it. Friends, our time together in this space is coming to a close, but our time to worship God never ends. Go out from this place to be the creative inventor, the loving caregiver, the incredible human being that each and every one of you are. Go out from this place in the confident knowledge that God's love follows you no matter where you go or what you experience. Amen. <laughs>